Welcome back to Bible and Blues. Uh, it is it's kind of a kind of a wet day out there today. We're supposed to get some snow. We had a little snow first thing this morning, um, and uh, it was uh, uh, headed off to church. I was supposed to run the lights at church. It's kind of funny, funny little story here. Uh, I was supposed to run the lights at church this morning, uh, but I had uh, I I've been fighting a cold this weekend, and I I was really rough yesterday, and, and I and I uh, sent a message to our worship director saying, you know, yeah, I'm a little iffy for Sunday. Well, she set something up for somebody else to do it. Kudos on her, but she I, I didn't get the message, so I muscled my way into church, got everybody ready, we headed in there, and found out oh there's somebody else there. I'm going home. So <laughs> anyway, um, so. Yeah, that's what constitutes a funny story when you don't feel good. So I've been fighting a cold, so we're going to do this anyway. Um, uh, we're going to do uh, Chapter 3 of Rooms. Uh, I'm going to try to set this up so that uh, you know maybe it doesn't look like I'm, you know... And I'm not a fan of pop filters because of all the... They take up a lot of space. Uh, so, um, anyway. Uh, so we're going to do Chapter 3 of Rooms, and... Uh, uh, I'm going to muscle my way through it, and I'll have to edit out my sniffles and my <coughs> a lot. Uh, so uh, you'll see some cuts, some jump cuts. I really wasn't up to uh, pulling out my, my green screen. As much as I, as much fun as it is to have a green screen, it's a bit of work to set, up the, set it up and, and do it. Because I, I do everything in my kitchen, so it has to get put away uh, when I'm not doing it. So um, anyway, uh, without further ado, let's uh, go ahead and get started on rooms. Uh, by James L. Rupert, uh, Chapter 3. Chapter 3, Showtime. Time to find out how fully his great-uncle Archie had abandoned his ro his rocker. Just after 3 o'clock Saturday afternoon, Micah took the first Cannon Beach exit, lowered his window, and breathed, it, breathed deep. The tang of the ocean air filled him. In his tasted, in it, he tasted gut-wrenching memories, and for a reason he, did, he didn't understand, hope. The odds of the house being real were zero, but he had to see the dirt. It was the fastest way to get Archie's letter out of his head. Mike had pulled up the satellite photo once more before leaving Seattle, hoping to, hoping to answer the question before he left. It still showed, showed the outdated patch of open land where Archie's house now supposedly sat. If it did exist, the place would be four, would be four miles south of Cannon Beach, so he didn't need to go through town. But since he hadn't been there in more than 20 years... He wanted to see the changes. It wasn't the real reason he pulled off the Highway 101. Part of him desperately wanted a, wanted a house to be standing at the address on the card. He wanted to believe someone was crazy enough, or maybe cared enough about him, to build him a home on the Oregon coast. But a bigger part didn't believe, and driving through town would delay the inevitable disappointment. He turned onto Main Street, and a few seconds later, Osborne's cream... Osborne's ice creamery filled his vision. Still there. His family used to camp up and down the Oregon coast every summer, and every trip ended at Osborne's for two scoops of whatever flavor his brother and he wanted. Two scoops were never sweet enough because they, because they meant a summer of adventures had ended, and the bittersweet taste of fall and a new school year would settle on his tongue during the cheerless drive back to Seattle. But those drives ended when the accident shattered his life. South of town, he took the winding road 50 feet above the beach. Micah sh slowed his car to a crawl as he, as he watched seagulls pirouette in the, in the cobalt sky above Haystack Rock. A few minutes later, he pulled back onto 101 and swallowed hard. Then again, there was no reason to be nervous. The thought didn't help. His GPS showed the house would be just south of, of Arcadia be Beach State Park. As the park came into view, he slowed to 5 miles per hour pulled onto the shoulder, and studied the numbers on the little post till he found 34140. He tapped on his brakes and took furtive glances up and down the highway. Micah's heart quickened as he turned right, and his tires crunched slowly over the gravel driveway. It curved to the right, enough to block, block a view of where the house might be. A faint briny smell seeped into the car, and he lowered his window. The roar of a thousand waves filled his ears. He stopped his car before the view in front, of the, in front of him could answer the question pounding it through his mind. Come on, God. Let there be something there. And let it be more than an outhouse. The, world, the words spilled out before he could stop them. Where did they come from? 
Prayer wasn't part of his to-do list, or at least it hadn't been for eons. Opening his eyes, Michael looked up at, a sky, at the sky and let the prayer linger, watching the thought of it float up into nothingness. Then again, maybe God was still up there, even after all these years. The pace of his breathing increased. He couldn't put it off any longer. A bead of sweat ran, ran down his forehead into his eye. He wiped it away and pressed the gas pedal, as if it, weren't a, if, as if it were a feather. His car scrunched forward, and a corner of the house appeared. He let, a long, he let out a long, low whistle as more came into view. First glance said it could, be, could compete easily with any of the mansions the Vanderbilts had ever constructed. He leaned forward over his dashboard. Whew. Top of the slate roof had to be 25, maybe 30 feet high. He got out of his car and walked, up, walked under the awning that led to the front door, pausing to marvel at the flowering gardens on his le right and left. They smelled like sunrise. A reflecting pool out to his left showed the image of a stone chimney rising along the east side of the house. The pool flowed out, far, flowed out the far end in a cascade of water, that rained down on mossy boulders before it settled onto a pond dotted with lily pads, probably filled with koi. Micah shook his head and chuckled. Two magnificent stone columns ran up either side of the solid fur door, highlighted by a bronze knob that looked ancient and new at the same time. Two 19th century gas lamps framed the polished limestone entrance. As he slid the key into the lock, a severe case of deja vu splashed over him. He'd seen this before. In a dream? A picture of a house just like this? Micah shivered as he turned the key. The feeling intensified as he walked through the front door. He had been here, hadn't he? No, not possible. The thing had just been finished. Get a grip. As he wandered forward, a puff of laughter escaped his lips and he grinned. Amazing! Four towering mahogany windows framed a spectacular view of the Pacific Ocean. Huge cedar beams held up a ceiling at least 25 feet high. A fireplace made of river rock dominated the wall to the left, and along the right wall were built in mahogany bookshelves, 10 feet tall. In front of the window sat an oversized overstuffed chair. A lamp next to it with no would no doubt cast a warm golden light. An ideal spot to watch the waves. Archie might have been a loon, but whoever built this place for him nailed it. Micah felt like he'd been coming here his entire life. How did Archie know? He and his great uncle must have, have had identical taste and style. Micah studied a massive painting of haystack, haystack rock hanging over the maple fire, fireplace mantel. Influenced by Monet, no question, with maybe a splash of Van Gogh. Micah tilted his head back and closed his eyes. Peace seemed to flit about him like a barn swallow, an unexpected emotion, but very welcome. His cell phone screamed at him, shattering the moment. He grabbed the phone. What? Wow, excuse me, Julie said. I just wanted to see if you were there yet, see if this place is real. Sorry, deep in thought. He startled me. I got here two minutes ago. You should see it, Jules. Micah spun on his heel. A, stair a spiral staircase wound, wound up to what looked like a long upstairs hallway. Of course the hallway would be would be spi of course the staircase would be spiral. He'd always loved them. It's stunning and bizarre at the same time. It feels familiar. How can a place you've never been to be before feel familiar? No idea. Micah turned and walked back to the to the picture windows to watch the surf. Could he kayak in it? But you like it. Impressive so far. I'll take some shots, show it to you next week. You mean that you mean day after tomorrow, right? Yeah, Michael hesitate Micah hesitated. Monday. After hanging up, he padded past the overstuffed chair that faced the window and thumped the armrest. I'll be back to you in a moment. Fresh doors led to a massive deck above the beach. He swung them open, and a, the pungent ocean air rushed at him. He watched the waves pound out their mesmerizing pattern, and amid the roar of the water, he listened to the, to the solitude. If only the waves could heal instead of stir up the past. Yin and Yang, he loved being here. He hated being here. He closed his eyes and let the wind, which he couldn't figure out which way it wanted to blow, joust his face and hair 
before he stepped back inside and kept his date with the leather chair. He propped his feet on the ottoman and did nothing. Forced himself to think nothing. Looked at nothing but what was straight ahead. When the horizon faded to black, he was still in the same position. He believed people calling called this relaxing. He used to do it, eons ago, before Rimsoft started sucking every minute of his time. A few more minutes and he'd get up and explore the house, at least find the master bedroom. But that intent sank into the chair along with his last moments of conscious thought. Mike awoke the next morning, still in the leather chair. Remembering he was where he was took a few seconds, but the stunning ocean view that greeted his half-open eyes did wonders for his memory. He spent the night in a chair? How could he fall asleep before seeing the rest of the house? Time for a self-guided tour. The rest of the house didn't disappoint, with his fully stocked kitchen complete with an indoor grill, sub-zero freezer, and granite countertops. Game room with foosball, pool table, and darts. Colossal media room with, with maroon movie le- theater chairs. And a screen at least 8 by 5 A study with dark built-in bookshelves, wireless router, and a teak desk. The guest bedrooms were themed. One was sports, one for thrill seekers, and one for history buffs. This place just kept getting better. Just like the living room, the home was, was how Micah would have built it. He reached the master bedroom, and his palms started sweating. The entire house was exactly as he would have done it. It was laid out as if someone had in, had been inside his head and picked his favorite colors and styles and dropped them perfectly into place. His dream home, straight out of his dreams. He didn't like the idea of someone he had never met knowing his taste with this much precision. His mind spun. The construction had to cost millions, let alone the cost of the land. Add, add the home's contents, and it was probably one of the more expensive homes on the Oregon coast. Why spend that kind of money and, and build it for anyone, let alone him? It didn't compute. He returned to the main floor, walked out on the deck, and looked, at, looked up at the house. Rough guess, it was 9,000 square feet, and it was his. Unbelievable. That was the problem. The home was not believable. There had to be strings. They had to be attached somewhere. Good thing he wouldn't be around to find out. Micah glanced out over the ocean. He was going to sell the place as soon as possible. His stomach growled and he glanced at his watch. Ten o'clock. He walked back inside and grabbed his keys off the granite countertop with the intention of heading to town. Just before he stepped outside, he stopped himself. That door at the end of the end of one of the ground floor hallways was slightly open. A shaft of brilliant light spilling out of the room onto the carpet. A feeling washed over him. The feeling of a string about to be pulled. And that is the end of chapter three. Wow. Um, So what what do you think is happening here? I mean, the house is huge. 9,000 square feet. Gorgeous. I'm going to, you know, and and hopefully somewhere in here you'll see some stuff uh, right over here. Jeez, I can't even can't even film right now <sighs> hopefully you'll find so you'll, you'll see some stuff right over here uh uh, uh that i could find some clips or something that, sh- that shows that kind of stuff um but uh what do you think what do you what do you think of the uh the house so far the house is huge over a million dollar house nine thousand square foot uh you know fully furnished uh, right on the coast uh the oregon coast and uh uh there it, that is a beautiful coastline i can tell you that uh so um, why would why would Archie do this? And then as we, as we're going through this, and uh, you can see his resolve to sell is kind of he's is going it's going up and it's going down, it's going up and it's going down, it's, it's going down a little bit more. Uh, so um, yeah, so we can see that he's probably not going to sell. He's not right away, right? So uh, then then uh, and the, in the final paragraphs here, there's there's another room and there's a light spilling out of it. It's a brilliant light. What is that brilliant light that we that is spilling out of it? We don't know yet. Um, and why is there a light? Because he didn't turn that on. It's like he didn't see that room before. Um, so that's it. That's where we're at. Uh, what did you think? Um, what kind of a choice is Micah going to make? You can tell his, uh, his girlfriend's probably not going to be too happy with it. Um, and uh, how does uh, his Uncle Archie know his taste in this so well? How does he know uh, what... 
how, what styles, what games to put in, to put a movie theater in, to make themes for the spare rooms, uh, the, the, and um, to give him that opportunity to sit down and we're like, how did he know this stuff? Uh, so, um, anyway, uh, let me know in the comments below, uh, you know, right, right down, right down here, uh, there's comments. Okay. You know, and, uh, over here, there's a place to subscribe. And so, um, hop up, tell me what you think. Give me, uh, give me a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, if you don't like it, tell me why, uh, so I can make changes. So anyway, uh, God bless. And we will talk at you later. It is, uh, going to be the Super Bowl in about, uh, three more hours. So, I got to get this edited and put up, put up for those people who aren't going to watch the Super Bowl. <laughs>